A warm welcome to Euro Wizard Part 2, a magical sleep saga inspired by the world of Harry Potter, where you are the main character. As you take a moment to get comfortable, remind yourself that this is your story, and there are no limits to what you can add to this adventure. Anyone that you meet along the way throughout this saga can be whoever you want them to be. They might be people from your own life, a famous figure that you admire, or a character from the books. So be sure to bring along your own unique imagination. Before we begin, we will do a short breathing pattern called 445. This is designed to help you slow down and quiet your mind after a long and busy day, preparing you for a good night's sleep. So, when you are ready, just exhale any remaining breath that you have and as you feel the urge to breathe in, then inhale for four. Hold it here for four. And release for five. Allow the body to become heavier and the mind to empty. So that's in for four, hold for four, and out for five, just let all of it go, again in for four, hold for four, and out for five. Continue to breathe in this way in your own time, and as you let go of the day, allow yourself to sink deeper and deeper into comfort. Imagine that you are blowing away any remaining worries or lingering thoughts. And now allow your breath to return to a natural rhythm. Let your thoughts turn to those of magic, wonder and adventure as we continue our Harry Potter sleep saga. You're a wizard, part two, the journey to Hogwarts. You wake up in an unfamiliar but very comfortable four-poster bed. The sound of a crackling fire soothes your morning fatigue. 
the soft pillow and thick duvet have an enchanting warmth, one that makes you want to stay in bed forever. The entire room is framed on a very slight angle, with crooked walls and an uneven floor. On your left, a thin blue curtain is parted ever so slightly, and on the wood-panelled wall opposite, there is a long slit of light with beads of dust dancing in the golden glow. The white plaster ceiling above you is full of hairline cracks, and as you rest here, tracing the jagged lines above you, you begin to remember the magical day you had only yesterday, and you start to piece together the puzzle. You recall how a mysterious letter was delivered by an owl, and as you opened it, the letter transported you to a dark passageway in the heart of London, where you were guided by a beautiful black and white cat. Finally, you emerged through an enchanted door into a magical alley full of witches and wizards just like you. You delved into the tunnels of the Great Goblin Bank and found your new wizarding money inside a hidden vault deep underground. Waiting for you outside the bank was your best friend, who had also received a letter and who will join you on this magical adventure. Together, you collected your robes and uniforms, purchased your books and potions equipment, and finally received the most precious gift of all, your magic wand. You recall being lost in the alley last night, but your trusty companion, the black and white cat, brought you here to this magical tavern for a warm wizard's supper and a soft bed for a perfect night's sleep. And now, today, you will board the enchanted train and journey to a beautiful, wondrous castle, hidden from the non-magical world, ready to begin your training. With a flutter in your heart, Thinking of the day ahead, you climb out of bed and walk over to your many cases, stacked neatly against the far wall. On top of your cases sits a wonderful, enchanted animal, fast asleep in their cage. A gift given to you by your best friend. You take a moment to open the cage and give them a good morning tickle under their chin. They sleepily sniff your hand and curl up once again, desperate for just a few minutes more. You open a brown paper shopping bag and take out your uniform and your robe. An unstoppable excitement is bubbling in your stomach now. And before you know it, you are pulling on your new uniform as quickly as you can. You take a moment to look at yourself in the crooked, dusty mirror hanging on the wall. You are fully robed, looking wonderfully smart and ready for your adventure into magic. Perched on a table to your right is a small rectangular box. Your eyes are drawn to it and to the enchanting pulse it gives off. 
you take the box in your hand, slip off the lid, and fold back the thin piece of silk. With a deep breath, you gently remove your wand and hold it tight in your hand. Suddenly, it all makes sense. This wand is the final piece of the puzzle, the one thing that makes all of this real. Only those who hold magic within them are destined to carry one of these, and this wand is yours. It chose you. Just then, there is a knock at your bedroom door. You have a funny feeling who it might be, and you open it with an eager smile. Standing in front of you, also fully robed, is your best friend. They greet you with an excited chuckle and an impatient shuffle in their feet. One hand carries their animal in their cage, and the other holds their wand. They lift up the wand in front of their face, showing it off to you with a wide smile before slipping it back into their pocket. As you turn and collect your animal, you whisper to them that it is time for breakfast. Instantly, their eyes pop open and look around excitedly. You cannot help but laugh at their innocence and empathize with their morning hunger. You close the door behind you, and your friend leads the way down the crooked wooden stairs, slowly revealing the now familiar tavern from last night. The delicious smell of a hot breakfast circles the room, and a delicate steam drifts above the trestle tables. A large stone fire pit crackles away in the middle of the tavern, keeping the whole room at a perfect warmth. Oil lanterns and floating candles are dotted around the tavern. A carved and crooked oak chandelier sways gently over the room, and soft yellow lights give off a comforting golden glow. There are many drowsy witches and wizards enjoying a hearty breakfast and fresh morning coffee, but the atmosphere is subdued, quiet and calm. One or two chairs are unstacking themselves from atop the tables. They turn themselves upright and slot perfectly into place without the help of a single human hand. Perched in the corner is a pink-haired witch with a newspaper floating in front of her. The pages turn independently and the picture on the front moves like a short video on repeat. Her coffee stirs by itself as she reads the daily news of this magical world. After waiting patiently at the bottom of the steps, the friendly barman greets you. You remember his grubby nose from last night, and you wonder if the poor fellow ever gets a day off. You and your friend each pay a sickle, and with a warm smile, he guides you to a low wooden table, advising you he will be right back before dashing off into his kitchen, a small red and white towel over his shoulder. At that moment, a white cloth and metal bucket float over to you, 
and begin to wipe down the table without spilling a single drop of water. The precision and detail of their work is remarkable. The cloth wrings itself out over the bucket and wipes down the table again, this time drying it off. As you rest your arms on the wood, it is clean, fresh, and warm to the touch. You cannot help but think just how wonderful magic really is. The barman returns now with two copper coffee pots and places them down on the table. Inside, he tells you, is their famous wizard's brew, a recipe crafted by the very first owner of this tavern and has been passed on for generations. The wizard's brew takes the taste of whatever drink you are craving the most, and if you wish, you can even change flavors halfway through. In that moment, two small plates float over to your table, topped with a hot, steaming pastry, freshly baked. This, the barman tells you, is another delicacy of the tavern, one of his own inventions. One small pastry can fill the stomach for hours, giving off a comfortable warmth that runs through your body for the entire day. From behind his back now, the barman reveals two small metal bowls full of multicolored dried food. The perfect breakfast, he says, for your magical animals. You and your friend take your companions from their cage and place them next to you on your bench, the silver bowls in front of them. With a wiggle of excitement, they tuck in and begin to enjoy their enchanted breakfast. The pot of wizard's brew rises from the table and pours into a small cup in front of you. The rich, hot, golden liquid falls almost in slow motion and a thin steam lifts from the rim. As the brew begins to whirlpool in your cup, you take your first sip. In that moment, you taste the drink you are most craving for and instantly a beautiful tingling sensation begins to pulse from the top of your head, through your body, and all the way to the tips of your fingers and your toes. With a few bites of this delicious pastry, there is a new warmth in your stomach. It is like a mini fire with the embers glowing steadily providing a wonderful heat that will fuel you for the whole day. Your friend gives you a smile and you share your thoughts for the journey ahead and the feeling of finally arriving at the castle tonight. Just then, you feel a soft brushing against your leg but when you look under the table, nothing is there. Suddenly, you hear your friend laughing above you, and as you lift your head back up, you are met by the delicate face of your old companion, the black and white cat, looking into your eyes with a knowing mischief. Your furry friend has come to see you off today 
and make sure that you get on your way safely. With a full heart, you give them a gentle stroke on their head as they settle on your lap and curl up in a perfect circle, purring softly. You get the impression that they would love to come with you, but you know that their duty is here, for they are one of the many guardians of this magical alley. Still, you know that whenever you want to come back to this place, they will always be here, waiting for your return. You take a moment to enjoy this beautiful atmosphere, the sound of your purring companion, your happy and hungry animal devouring their breakfast, and your very best friend sitting opposite you. As you finish your pastry and the last drop of your wizard's brew, the barman approaches and in a whisper asks you to follow him, for he has something to show the both of you. The black and white cat sits up and leads the way behind the barman. You feel a new comfort and confidence with this cat guiding you once again. And you know undoubtedly that you have made a friend for life. The barman leads you down a hidden grey corridor, peppered with dim torchlight. The corridor turns a sharp right, then left, left again, and then right. You walk straight now at a steady pace, but before the end of the next corridor, the barman stops, turning to face a single red brick on your left. He pushes the brick slowly into the wall. Then the bricks begin to fold apart and create a small art doorway. A blue light pulses from the entrance and a wonderful magic radiates from inside the room. One by one you walk through the door into a small wooden room. Huge white blankets cover old chairs and bits of furniture. There are broken tables, chandeliers, and old used tankards scattered around the room. Opposite you, looking very out of place in this crooked, dusty room, is a pure white marble fireplace, but there is no fire burning. Instead, the floor of the fireplace glows in a dark blue and pulses with light. Much of the light, however, is blocked by a large silhouette, a shadow in the shape of a huge man. As the shadow steps to one side, the light reveals his face, and you see it is not a man at all, but a giant. A giant easily ten feet tall, with the bushiest, blackest beard you ever saw, and shaggy black hair down to his shoulders. He wears a thick brown coat and heavy boots with brass buckles. For a giant, he has the friendliest face you have ever seen. An inexplicable warmth radiates from him, 
one that makes you feel calm and safe. He lets out a low chuckle and gently picks up the black and white cat who curls up in his arms, giving off a rich, satisfied purr. With the cat in one arm, this gentle giant holds out his other hand, introducing himself. He is the gamekeeper, he tells you, and professor of magical creatures. He has been sent by the headmaster to provide you with safe passage to King's Cross. His enormous palm and fingers wrap around both your hand and your friend's, and as he shakes, you feel yourself almost being lifted from the ground. Your smile fades to confusion for a moment, and you ask the giant why you had to be brought all this way to an old hidden room just to meet him. With a twinkle in his eye, he tells you that this is no ordinary room. In here there is a secret portal, a gateway that will take you directly to King's Cross Station, and he points a large finger at the white marble fireplace. At that moment, the barman takes out a small green pouch tied up with string. Flu powder, he tells you, a magical means of transportation. Your best friend turns to you excitedly, reminding you that only yesterday they used flu powder to travel here. They assure you that it is perfectly safe and, in fact, very fun. All you have to do, the giant explains, is take a pinch of powder in your hand, step into the fireplace, and speak the name of your destination as you throw down the powder. Then, as if to bid you farewell, the black and white cat leaps from the giant's arms and runs over to you, circling your legs and brushing against you. Suddenly, they roll onto their back, demanding a belly rub. You kneel down and gently stroke their tummy as they continue to purr. You will be back soon, you tell them, and you can't wait to see them again. They brush their head against your hand and offer one or two affectionate licks. And as you stand up, your furry companion leaps up onto a stool next to you, patiently waiting to see you off. Your friend stops for a moment, reminding the barman that all your luggage is still in your room. With a knowing smile, he whips off one of the white blankets to reveal both of your trolleys, perfectly packed with all of your bags, ready to go. You walk over to your luggage and place your animal cage on the very top. Their eyes roam around this enchanting room with a curious glow. Your best friend offers to go first, so you can see how it works. The giant tells you he will follow up behind the both of you, bringing your luggage with him. The barman opens the pouch, and you watch your best friend pull out a small fist of powder. They step into the large fireplace the dark blue light illuminating their smile. Then they speak the words King's Cross Station and they throw down the powder. Instantly the blue light erupts into a rich green, 
covering your friend and filling the room with an emerald shimmer. As the light slowly turns back to blue and fades once again, you see the fireplace is empty. Your friend awaits you now at King's Cross. The giant places a reassuring hand on your shoulder, but you are not nervous anymore. You are filled with wonder and excitement. You walk up to the barman, taking a fistful of powder from the pouch. It is the texture of damp sand, clumpy and cold, but soft to the touch. You step into the bubbling blue fireplace, your heart beating in anticipation. You take a deep breath, and with one last look at your new friends, you speak the words, King's Cross Station, and throw down the powder. Suddenly, you are engulfed in an emerald green light, and you feel a pulsing sensation throughout your body, a rippling vibration. There is the sensation of floating through the air, and you feel the warmth of the sun beaming over your face. It's as if you are sitting atop a cloud, floating through a magical sky, backed by an emerald sunrise. You can feel yourself passing through different places now, and occasional images flash by. You see the big red London buses, the black taxis, and Millennium Bridge. You pass over Leicester Square, Big Ben, and the London Eye. And just then, a soft white light begins to lift over your eyes. Your feet land on a hard concrete floor, and slowly the world comes into focus again. Your eyes and ears awaken to the sight and sound of a busy train station. The hustle and bustle of ordinary life ticks away and the muffled tannoy echoes across the station. Your best friend stands in front of you, and you share an unstoppable grin. You step out into King's Cross Station. You can hardly believe it. Behind you is a small alcove of white brick and you watch the last light of emerald disappear into the floor. In the next moment, you see the alcove expand in size, bigger and bigger, until at last the giant appears. You see the bushy beard first, followed by his huge shoulders and enormous feet. He steps out of the emerald light, pushing two trolleys, with two very flustered animals perched on top. You check around to see if anyone has noticed, but the muggle world continues on, unaware and oblivious. Unlike you, they are blind to the magic. Your friendly giant 
points a huge finger down the station toward platforms nine and ten, and you follow behind his heavy footsteps through the now busy station. There is something warm and comforting about the giant's presence. He is uncommonly kind, and you feel safe and protected with him guiding your way. He turns to give you a cheeky smile with an excited twinkle in his eye. He carries a large umbrella and uses it now almost as a walking stick. Many of the muggles have noticed the giant now and very carefully navigate around him at a distance. They give a confused, jaw-dropping stare, and he responds by mimicking their silly expressions right back at them. You cannot help but laugh at this gentle giant. The station is formed of tall archways of grey brick, with blue and white metal signs at each platform. The walls tower high up to the ceiling, and the early morning sun reflects on the glass-domed roof. The buzz of rush hour whizzes through the air, with restless passengers fidgeting on the platform as many trains are pulling into the station. It is incredible to think that all these ordinary folk are completely unaware of the beautiful, boundless magic that you have in your life. You arrive at a thick brick archway planted firmly between platforms 9 and 10. The gentle giant stops and turns to you. This is it, he says, another magical gateway. Only this one takes you directly to the enchanted platform of 9 and 3 quarters, where you will find the magical express waiting for you. He pulls out a silver pocket watch and flicks it open. You have plenty of time yet before the train leaves, he reassures you. Plenty of time. Then, suddenly, he gasps, asking if you have your tickets. In perfect timing, you and your friend both remove the paper tickets from your pocket, holding them up with a proud smile. The gentle giant chuckles to himself with a sigh of relief, admitting sheepishly that he can be a bit of a worrier. To pass through this gateway, he adds, all you have to do is run at the pillar between nine and ten. To your disappointment, the giant tells you he won't be coming with you on the train. He has business to attend to at the school, but rest assured he will be seeing you later this evening. He rummages in the bag over his shoulder and produces two hardback books and hands one to each of you. The History of Magic. These should give you a bit of a head start, he adds with a mischievous wink. You cannot resist the urge to throw yourself at the giant into a huge, warm embrace. He lifts both of you into the air with a chuckle and places you gently back down again. Be off now, he adds with a loving tear in his eye and a quiet sniff. He hates goodbyes, he tells you, but you promise to see him soon and he nods affectionately. You place your new book inside your top case and stand facing the pillar. You are ready. 
You hold your trolley with confidence and with a bubbling excitement you run straight towards the brick archway. Suddenly a darkness washes over you and the sounds of King's Cross begin to fade. You feel a tingling sensation running through your body from the top of your head to the very tips of your toes. The darkness morphs into white and gold and a pulsing pale light forms around you. It begins to fade slowly as your eyes adjust once more, revealing a magical train station, packed full of witches and wizards and hidden from the muggle world. The station is arched with cream-coloured brick in smooth formation and peppered with a silver stardust that floats through the air. And there, through a thin mist, you see it. A black-fronted steam engine, coupled with a deep crimson and contoured with glistening gold. Behind the engine, a perfect line of crimson and gold carriages continue deep into the tunnel beyond. The chimney puffs out steam of marshmallow white, as thick as a spring cloud. It covers the wheels of the train, giving the impression that this majestic engine is floating above the ground. On the front of the engine is a red sign, arched ever so slightly, decorated with gold writing. The Hogwarts Express. You have dreamt of this day for as long as you remember, and now you are finally coming home. With a tap on your shoulder, you turn to see your best friend's smiling face, a happy tear in their eye. You put your arms around one another and savour this beautiful moment. With your best friend in tow, you push your trolleys through the lively crowd. You can feel a powerful magic swelling in the air around you. Your feet feel as though they barely touch the floor, and you get the sensation that you are gliding along the platform. Wizards and witches are sweeping past you in all directions. Some wear the colours of their house. Others, like you, wear a black tie and have yet to meet the sorting hat. Further along the station, on your right, is a handful of wooden stalls. Some stalls are selling sweets or second-hand books or last-minute odds and ends for school. Suddenly, you hear a whistle in the distance. It is time to board the train. At that moment, a friendly-looking conductor approaches, wearing a thick white moustache, a plump belly, and a scarlet uniform 
lined with gold. He offers you a helping hand with all of your luggage. With a thankful smile, you keep your suitcase and your animal cage and hand over the rest of your luggage. Your jaw drops in amazement as the conductor twirls their wand above their head, effortlessly lifting up your remaining luggage. On the side of the carriage, a large door of deep red flips open, revealing a hidden compartment filled with many cases already. One by one, your luggage floats in neat formation and stacks itself carefully in line with the rest, shuffling into place. And the heavy door falls closed with a delicate click. You and your friend thank the conductor, who gives you a low bow and a smile. Free now from your heavy trolley, you make your way towards one of the many carriages and climb the sturdy iron steps, your suitcase and animal in one hand each. The carriage is filled with a bustling atmosphere. Witches and wizards are chattering away in the corridor, with many searching for an empty compartment. Your friend leads the way as you walk down the narrow corridor, painted in eggshell white and lit by soft yellow lamps, finished with a rich blue carpet. Through the large windows on your left, you peer inside the cosy compartments. Many are full of happy, smiling wizards talking away. They give you a wave as you wander past, and you return a slightly nervous smile. But already you feel so welcome here, and a sense of belonging surges through you. Just then there is a vibration under your feet, and the carriage seems to expand from the inside. You feel yourself sway gently back and forth, as right before your eyes is revealed an empty compartment waiting for you. Your friend turns to you excitedly and slides open the door as you both step inside. You are met with a soothing fresh air, and it is the perfect temperature. The carpet beneath your feet is soft and thick. There are two long seats facing each other, topped with blue and white cushions on the base and the back. Opposite is a huge flat window looking out onto the other side of the platform, where you see a short walkway through the tunnel. There is an old Victorian lamp hanging from the wall above the window, and a golden light echoes from it. You place your suitcase and your animal next to you, as you take a seat opposite your best friend, as you unlock the cage, instantly your animal moves onto your lap, curling up in complete comfort. You feel so lucky to have this new companion with you on your adventure. Through the door of your compartment and out of the far window, you can see onto the main platform. The white-moustached conductor is waving down to the main engine now, and the platform is completely empty. And then you hear it. 
the train wakes up as the engine puffs into life. You feel a rumble under your feet and through your body as the heavy wheels start to turn, and you feel yourself moving now, slow and steady at first, but soon your pace quickens as the crimson steam train powers on into the tunnel ahead. Your magical journey has begun. For the moment there is darkness at the window as the train journeys on through the long sweeping tunnel. The repetitive sound of the wheels chugging away lulls you deeper into a calm and relaxed state. The carriage is illuminated by the lamp above you and specks of gold dust dance through the air. The atmosphere in the carriage is quiet and peaceful. There is a comfort in the unfaltering rhythm of the train. It is strong and safe. In the next moment, there is a tap on the window of your compartment, and the familiar plump conductor gives you a smile as he slides open the door. He clicks his golden hole punch between his thumb and finger, and asks to check your tickets. You reach into your pocket, pull out the thick paper ticket, and hand it over. With a twist of his moustache, the conductor lets out a satisfied chuckle that wobbles his protruding belly, and he punches a hole in both of your tickets. He bows his head and backs out of the compartment, throwing your tickets up into the air. Your ticket takes the shape of a small bird and flutters down into your lap. The smiling conductor wishes you both a magical and peaceful journey as they slide the door closed and shuffle off down the corridor. Just then, a beautiful light illuminates the carriage and for a brief second, you squint at the sudden exposure. As your eyes adjust, they are met by a majestic countryside, like nothing you have ever seen before. The grass is pure emerald, and the curved horizon of hills creates a dark silhouette in the distance dividing the land perfectly with the rich sapphire sky. Enormous trees are dotted across the landscape, with flocks of birds swooping around the branches. The birds ascend high into the sky in a cluster, creating fleeting patterns in the air before drifting back down to their many nests among the old oaks of this earth. This land is so enchanting, so full of magic, that you can almost see the wind itself, swirling in white lines and carrying the odd leaf on a looping journey through the trees. In the small hedgerows nearby, you see families of rabbits huddling together or sprinting across the landscape. Above them, collections of butterflies seem to be following, and they create their own colourful displays below the tree line. Occasionally, deer 
emerge in small herds atop the golden peaked hillsides, grazing happily and helping their young fawns take their very first steps in this world. One or two stags leap across the landscape, creating majestic silhouettes above the horizon, a picture you will never forget. It is clear to see that all the beautiful facets of nature have become one in this countryside paradise. Suddenly, there is another knock on the inside window, and the door slides open. A squat elderly witch peeps her head over the top of her enormous trolley that is packed full of magical treats. She asks politely if you would like anything from the trolley. Your jaw drops in amazement at the sight in front of you. Some of the sweets you recognize, the famous chocolate frogs, jelly beans in every flavor imaginable, licorice wands and sugar quills. You spot gummy snakes in purple and green that wiggle from one corner of the trolley. There are candied Catherine wheels that give off a colorful fizz as they whirl round, glowing in bright red, yellow, and blue. Twirling toffee wraps around itself, pretzel-like, and the more it twirls, the softer and more decadent it becomes. The elderly witch informs you that the napping nougat is a popular new treat and would be perfect for a long journey. It's not too sweet, but has a blend of wonderful flavors and when eaten, will take you into a deep, peaceful nap. You share a wide-eyed smile with your friend and you pull out a few sickles each you buy yourselves a napping nougat and anything else that catches your eye on this magical trolley. With your very generous pile of treats, the old lady gives you a gentle smile and slides the door shut. You put the napping nougat to one side for now and begin to tuck in to the rest of your snacks. Some of them remind you of your favorite sweets from the muggle world, but others are so unique, so enchanted, that there is quite simply nothing else like it. As you work your way through your mini feast, you begin to confide in your best friend about what you think the castle might look like, what kind of food will be served at the famous feasts, and how you both feel about finally starting your journey as a wizard. You wonder if there might be any hidden passageways or mysterious secrets locked away in this ancient, bewitching castle. The conversation turns to the sorting ceremony tonight, and you imagine which of the four wizarding houses might suit you best. There is the house of the red and gold lion, recognized for their bravery and passion. The house of the yellow and black badger, admired for their patience, hard work, and loyalty. 
the house of the blue and bronze eagle, who pride themselves on academia, wit, and forward thinking. And finally, the house of the silver and emerald serpent, where ambition, diligence, and creativity are of the utmost importance. You allow yourself a moment to really imagine what it might be like and how it would feel to be sorted into your favorite wizarding house. Your friend smiles at you deep in thought, as if to know what you are thinking, and they reassure you that no matter where you are sorted, then that house will have gained a wonderful new wizard. You thank them with a sigh of relief, and you are filled with an immense gratitude for this brilliant person opposite you. You cannot imagine taking this journey without them. You sit now in a peaceful silence, enjoying the company of your best friend and gazing out the window across the rolling green hills, now backed by a late afternoon sun. Your animal has fallen fast asleep and you stroke their head gently as they curl up on your knees. Your thoughts turn to the gentle giant and his comforting, warm presence. You look forward to seeing him tonight and wonder if he might take you on any adventures through the castle. The book he gave you, A History of Magic, rests on your suitcase. You open it and flick through the pages. You notice a thin piece of parchment sticking out like a bookmark. You fold to the marked page and reveal a chapter titled The Guardian of Hogwarts. There is a note on the loose parchment written in charcoal pencil with unjoined writing. The note reads, my dear old friend Norbert, with a smiley face drawn at the end. Before you can read the chapter, you hear a deep, booming echo outside, a great animal calling out. Outside the window is a solitary mountain peak. Circling the mountain, you see huge arched wings propelling a snake-like body of brown and emerald. It has a long swishing tail braided with small spikes. You stare without blinking in complete amazement. A dragon. You have only ever heard of these creatures in fairy tales. Can it really be true? You check the book and see a beautiful watercolor painting of this dragon. A dark brown body with hints of emerald in its scales. As you read on, the book reveals that this dragon hatched on the school grounds and was cared for in early life by the giant gamekeeper of the castle. This dragon, Norbert, was taken to Romania to live with his own kind. But years later, at the request of the headmaster, Norbert and his new family returned to the school and he became the guardian of this magical land, watching down from the peak of the mountain 
protecting the school, the train, and all who dwell within. As the dragon spots the train, you hear another call echo over the mountain, and three more dragons appear, almost out of thin air. The group descends down the side of the mountain and towards the rolling train. As the family of dragons gets closer, you recognize Norbert immediately, and he gives a low, swooping display of prowess and elegance. A second dragon of similar size, but the color of pure sapphire, joins in with the display, and the two dragons swirl together in the sky creating a breathtaking spectacle. As they turn and dance, a cloud of gold dust falls from their wings and drifts across the landscape in a soft glitter. Then, from further behind, appear two baby dragons, both a wonderful blend of emerald and sapphire, and barely a year old. They are still learning how to use their wings, and they swoop from side to side, trying to catch the wind. One of the baby dragons lets out a hiccup and a cough, coupled with a small burst of orange fire. Their innocence and their beauty overwhelms you, and you feel a sudden deep affection for these rare, magical creatures. Norbert and his partner soar majestically over the land, and the two babies beat their wings as fast as they can, trying to keep up. Against the low sun, the sapphire dragon illuminates in a flourish of blue that beams down onto the rich green hills. These dragons are here to protect you and will watch over you in your life as a wizard. As the dragon's display comes to an end, this precious family begins to soar back up into the sky. The little ones are now perched on their parents' back, riding one each. They soar higher and higher, until at last they catch the wind above and begin to glide back over to their mountain refuge. A sense of peace and complete tranquility is flowing through you now. You have witnessed something unforgettable and utterly magical. This is a memory that will stay with you forever. The train passes through a small tunnel of trees now, 
and a sudden shadow overtakes the carriage. You decide to unwrap your napping nougat, break it in half and offer a piece to your friend. The first bite is an instant sensation. Your lips become warm and a soft vibration begins to run over them, travelling into your mouth and over your tongue. A deep relaxation and warmth trickles through your body now and the temptation to close your eyes is almost irresistible. As you enjoy this delicious, sticky treat, you think about the magic of the dragon's display, and you feel a new excitement inside you, ready for your arrival at the castle. You emerge in a flash from the tunnel of trees, and now before your eyes is a luminous green valley with the setting sun perfectly in the middle. The golden rays reflect on a huge body of water below, creating a shimmering starlight on the lake. The train plows forward onto a long, curved viaduct, looking out across this hidden valley. Tall grey archways hold up this enormous bridge with ease, and the view before you is breathtaking. Eagles dance in the red sunset and soar gracefully down the valley. The rippling water creates a glitter below, and the top of the sun peers over the horizon in a rich crimson and gold. Your eyelids are heavy now, and your best friend is already fast asleep. They lie comfortably on their seat, peaceful and relaxed, and as you gaze at this glorious sunset, your head resting on the window, you feel your whole body losing all tension, as each muscle begins to soften and unravel, like a warm butter slowly melting. Your mind is clear of thoughts, and the only thing that matters is this glorious sunset. The golden red valley, and the far green country. All of this slowly fades now, and you are sinking deeper and deeper into a wonderful nap. And then, as soon as you feel your eyes close, you open them again. A peace and quiet surrounds you now, and the golden valley is no more. Instead, a rich blue night washes over you, and the light of the full moon beams into your window, and the train is completely still. You have arrived. From outside your window, you see a train station with a single platform. You watch stars beginning to reveal themselves, one by one, backed by a dark night. The moon illuminates the frosted concrete below, 
and gives off a silver glitter. Thin, bare trees are dusted with a light evening frost, and as you watch the first students jumping off the train and onto the platform, you can see their breath in clouds of white. You flip open your suitcase and pull out a thick pair of gloves and a woolly hat in your favourite colour. Your friend has woken up now and there is a silent anticipation in the air. You place your animal in their cage, collect your belongings and say goodbye to your warm and cosy carriage. You wander down the corridor and slowly step out of the train and join in the hustle and bustle of happy, eager students. You are met with a cool breeze that is refreshing to breathe in after a long journey inside. It is crisp, but not too cold, and your gloves keep your hands and fingers toasty and warm. The steam from the engine mingles in the air and creates a misty, enchanting atmosphere. The moonlight reflects onto the train and transforms the matte crimson into a deep, glistening scarlet, coupled with a rich black and lined with luminous gold. Around the station is a small collection of grey houses, pieced together with bricks of different sizes and topped with dark brown tiles. Each one has a red door coupled with two square windows on each side. Thick plant life climbs the walls and spreads across the grey brick with one or two white flowers poking through the green. A black and red iron bridge connects each side of the platform. As you shuffle on the concrete, unsure of where to go next, you turn to see the white moustached conductor beaming down at you with a gleam in his eye. He offers to take your briefcase and your animal and put them with the rest of your belongings. These will all be taken care of, he tells you, and will be waiting for you in your dormitory. You thank the conductor once again and bid farewell to your animal for now. You and your friend wander through the thin layer of mist swirling a foot above the ground, and you join up with a large group of witches and wizards congregating at the end of the station. Above you is the silhouette of many owls flying off into the night, backed by the white orb of the moon. Then you hear a friendly voice calling out instructions. You recognize it immediately. Through the crowd, the gentle giant catches your eye, giving you a secret smile and a mischievous wink. He calls out to all first years to follow him through the woodland grove. As the congregation shuffles along, you and your friend race around the outside of the group and catch up with your new friend. The giant greets you with a hand on your shoulder and without breaking his stride,
begins to guide you down the woodland path, full of loose twigs and fallen leaves. He asks you all about your first adventure on the express, and if you manage to see his dear friend Norbert on the way. You tell him all about the wonderful dragon display, and reveal your excitement for the sorting ceremony. He gives a low chuckle, remembering when he too first arrived at this magical castle. Nothing like it, he tells you, nothing like it. High above you, more and more stars twinkle with delight, and the moonlight dabbles through the trees, guiding your way in tiny spotlights on the forest floor. As you emerge from the end of the grove, you arrive at the edge of an enormous lake, bordered by thick grass, with a dusting of frost on the tips of green. At the edge of the lake, there is a collection of long wooden piers. Lined up along the piers are small rowing boats, with a golden lantern hanging at the head of each one. Some of the other students are already jumping confidently into the boats. With the giant's hand on your back, and your best friend by your side, you are led to the very end of the pier and towards a much bigger rowing boat. The gentle giant picks you up with ease and places you in the boat. You take a deep breath, sensing that the castle is not far away. The boat sways vigorously as the giant steps aboard, making himself comfortable towards the rear. Upon these boats lies a powerful enchantment, he tells you, making it impossible for them to tip, even with a great big clumsy giant sitting in them, he says, pointing a huge finger at his own chest a proud smile on his face. When all the students are safely inside, the oars move themselves into place and begin to row by themselves. You feel a gentle jerk as the boat sets off, but in a few seconds you are drifting effortlessly over calm waters. There is the sensation of floating, of gliding along the never-ending lake, illuminated by the crystal moon, a soft breeze on your cheeks. There is a light mist rising from the lake, making it difficult to see in front of you, but this only adds to the mystery. A lantern hangs at the front of your boat, and as you look behind, you see an infinite collection of these soft yellow lights, like tiny fireflies following you on this magical boat ride. The silver stars pepper the black, coupled with a hint of purple and sapphire that outlines the swirling galaxy that is watching over you tonight. You allow yourself to enjoy this moment of serenity, of total tranquility. The sound of the paddles lapping in the water 
and the stillness of the night creates an atmosphere of complete peace. And then, as if by magic, the mist evaporates, almost in slow motion, revealing the most beautiful sight of all. Straight ahead of you, sitting atop a high and jagged rock formation, is the castle that you call home. Curved towers of gothic grey stand high and proud, creating a silhouette in the moonlight, backed by the snow-capped mountains in the distance. Golden orbs pulse from the windows, overlooking the castle grounds and beaming down over the lake like a collection of lighthouses guiding you home. As you gaze in wonder at this incredible sight, you know now that after years of searching, of waiting, you are finally found where you belong. Your best friend puts their arm around you, pulling you into a tight embrace. They whisper to you that there is nowhere else they would rather be, and nobody else they would rather be with. You could not be more grateful to have this special person with you tonight, as you both begin your journey into magic. A warmth flows through you now, and you know that no matter what happens, and no matter where life takes you, this wonderful castle and its enchanting world will always be here for you. The tall towers draw closer now, as the boats gently row to a new shore, stopping in a perfect line. Ahead of you, many golden torches illuminate the concrete steps, climbing up the steep rock face. Your eyes follow the zigzagging steps, up and up, until they reach the pointed silhouette of the enchanting castle. Your gentle giant takes the lead, guiding your group up the steps. On your climb, you talk happily with your best friend as you reminisce on the wonderful memories of the day. You imagine what possibly lies in store for you behind the castle doors. In what feels like seconds, you reach the very top of the stairs. 
Straight ahead of you are two huge iron doors forming an arched entrance and parted by a thin crack, a golden beam shimmering through. Far down to your left, you look back out over the lake and the silver glimmer of the moon dances on the water. The air up here is clean and fresh and absolutely magical. In front of you, the huge hands of the giant push open the doors and your group is swallowed by the golden light as you shuffle inside the echoey halls. Once more, you are guided up a set of concrete steps. And as you reach the top, there, sitting in front of a thick wooden door, is a small grey cat with black stripes along its back. The cat has piercing, all-seeing eyes. It has clearly lived here for a very long time. The cat jumps forward and your eyes widen in amazement as mid-air it transforms in the blink of an eye. Standing before you now is a tall, thin, elderly witch, a professor here, and the deputy headmistress. She dons an emerald robe topped with a black pointy hat. Her stern but gentle eyes reveal an unrivaled wisdom. The headmistress flicks her head around the group, taking in every single fresh-faced student in front of her. Suddenly, her cat-like eyes meet yours, and you feel a nervous but excited energy in your stomach. For a fraction of a second, you could have sworn that she smiled at you, Standing in her presence, you feel completely protected. There is an undeniable love running through her. She would do anything to keep each and every one of you safe. In the next moment, she tells you to move through the great hall and assemble in front of the large brown hat. The sorting ceremony is about to begin. With a delicate flick of her wand, the large wooden door swings open effortlessly. As you walk through the door, you are met with a new life and a buzz of excitement erupts from the many witches and wizards around you. The hall is made of grey stone, with gargoyles holding small braziers of fire on their backs, crackling away. There are four long trestle tables side by side. Above each table is a different set of banners. From left to right, you have the silver serpent backed by an emerald green. Next is the banner of the bronze eagle, coupled with dark blue. Then comes the gold lion on a red banner over the third table. And finally, to your right, the black badger mingled with a dark yellow. The headmistress leads you down the hall. The walls rise above you 
into a high arched ceiling, but the top of the ceiling cannot be seen, for in its place is a beautiful recreation of the night sky. There sits the pearl moon, and the black night is peppered with silver stars that twinkle in the darkness. Just below this bewitched sky is a collection of floating candles, hundreds of tiny orange flames bobbing up and down. Your group stops at the end of the hall in front of a small stool. Atop the stool is an old brown leather hat slightly dusty with a wide brim. This is the sorting hat. It has played a vital role in the destinies of every witch and wizard that has walked through these doors, and tonight it will decide your fate. Behind the stool is another table full of all the professors who teach at the school. In the middle is a beautiful hand-carved golden throne, and there sits the headmaster. His long white hair and flowing beard are almost the same length. He is an old man now, but his magnetic aura captivates you, and his presence in the room is undeniable. There is a childlike curiosity still living within him, and his piercing blue eyes sweep around the room behind half-moon spectacles, coupled with a warm, satisfied smile. Your gentle giant joins the professor's table now, and the deputy headmistress stands beside the sorting hat. The headmaster stands up and taps his spoon against his small sherry glass. The great hall falls into silence. He welcomes you one and all, at last, to this magical castle. Here is a place of enchantment and wonder, a place of adventure, of trials and exciting challenges. Here you will put your skills and your character to the test, embarking on your own unique journey to become a great student of magic. His eyes flick to meet yours. He tilts his head and gives you a mischievous smile with the corner of his mouth, followed by a subtle wink. You feel your cheeks flush and a wave of nerves passes through your stomach. And without further ado, he adds, it is time to begin the sorting ceremony. Your best friend grabs your arm excitedly as the first name is called out. You watch a young witch hesitantly step up to the stool. The headmistress places the sorting hat on her head as soon as the hat makes contact, you notice it takes the shape of a face. A face lacking detail, but with a big leathery mouth and drooping eyebrows at the top. The mouth is moving, and although you cannot hear any words, it is clear that the young witch can. Her eyes look up and trace left to right nervously. Then the hat 
opens its mouth once again, and out comes a booming voice that echoes across the hall, calling out a house name, this time for all to hear. The young witch shuffles down sheepishly and joins the students underneath the blue and bronze banner. Suddenly, the headmistress calls your name. In that moment, the world around you seems to come to a complete standstill. You look at your friend hesitantly and slowly make your way up to the stool. The headmistress gives you a comforting smile and you feel your nerves melting away in her presence. You sit and gaze out across the hall. Everything in front of you is a blur now. You are focused only on the sorting hat as it is lowered down onto your head. As it touches your crown, the great hall seems to fade entirely, and even the crackling of the fire has disappeared. And then you hear it speak. Well, 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 here is a promising prospect, if ever I saw one. I wonder where to put you. Then your thoughts turn to the four wizarding houses. You focus intensely on your favourite house. Yes, I thought that would be your choice. It makes sense. But are you sure? You find yourself repeating the same words over and over. Yes, I am sure. Yes, I am sure. And then the great hall comes back into focus. Your best friend stares at you in anticipation. And the hat bellows out your chosen wizarding house and a huge wave of relief washes over you. An eruption of applause and cheers come from your new house table. You are met with handshakes, pats on the back, and many happy faces welcoming you to your new house, and an unstoppable smile beams across your face. You look down, and your black tie transforms into the two colours of your house. You cannot believe it. In a happy daze, you watch a series of students being sorted left and right into their new houses. And then... Your best friend sits at the stool. Before the hat can even touch their head, it bellows out the same house name as yours. Of course, it had to be. They are your best friend after all. They climb down the steps and run over to you, and you fall into a tight embrace. You welcome them to their new house and watch with delight as their tie changes colour too, matching yours now. Finally, as the last student is sorted, the deputy headmistress takes away the stool and with it the sorting hat. Its mouth and brow have faded now, and it looks very much like an ordinary brown leather hat. That is, until next year. The headmaster stands up 
and once again tinks his spoon upon his glass. He calmly announces that dinner is served. Before your eyes, out of thin air, appears the most wonderful feast you have ever laid eyes on. Huge silver platters of delicious roast dinners, vegetables and fresh hot gravy are dotted along the table. Enormous cauldrons of soup are floating just above the table, with freshly baked bread giving off an enchanting smell. There are golden goblets that fill by themselves with whatever drink you desire. You simply say the name. And there is dessert too. Silver and gold plates stacked high with chocolate logs, cake, fruit and freshly made candy. This enormous buffet is encompassed by an enchanting stardust that drifts around the table in celebration of this magical feast. It is a bounteous banquet with every type of food you could possibly imagine. A ravishing hunger comes over you as you begin to fill your plate with all your favorite food and request your favorite drink from your golden goblet. You sit close to your best friend, still marveling at the wonderful magic going on all around you. As you enjoy your feast, you feel the food start to warm your stomach. You savor every beautiful bite and every tantalizing taste that dances across your tongue. The drink in your goblet is refreshing and cleanses your palate. In this moment, nothing else matters. You are here in the place of your dreams, sat with your best friend, enjoying delicious food and a wonderful atmosphere. Just then, you see the friendly ghosts of the castle drifting into the great hall. Some come through the floor, and others appear through the large windows or out of the walls. They are not scary, though, not in the least. These ghosts are the true guardians of this castle, and they are welcomed by everyone. There is a grand countess pacing the stone steps to your right. A knight on horseback gallops around the teacher's table. A ghostly court jester juggles white apples on the far side of the hall, as many more wonderful characters mingle around. Some of them acknowledge you and the other new students with a smile or a tip of the hat, while others are simply there to enjoy the atmosphere. One of the ghosts, a rather plump gentleman wearing a thick white renaissance wig, floats above your table, gurgling on a goblet of wine. On his last gulp, he lets out a very loud burp, and your table erupts in laughter. The ghost swoops out of the hall, chuckling away mischievously. The infectious laughter echoes round the table, and soon the entire great hall is sat giggling away at the belching ghost.
you gaze around this truly magnificent hall, with its perfect stonework and enchanting atmosphere. Above you, the candles burn in small orange spotlights, and beyond that is the swirling galaxy of stars, paired with the pulsing orb of the moon. As conversation mingles round the table, you let your mind drift to the day that you have had, and you think back to your journey so far, and all the wonderful memories you already have that will stay with you forever. You suddenly remember the lovely black and white sleepy cat who guided your way here. And although you miss them terribly, you know that right now they are probably enjoying a hearty dinner back at the tavern and will very soon be curled up by the fire ready for a long sleep, chasing birds in their dreams. You think about the joy of meeting the gentle giant today, who, as you turn to look at him, gives you a happy wave and a beaming smile. You reminisce on your wonderful train ride, and seeing your first ever dragon, the first of many, you hope. Your thoughts turn to the enchanting boat ride across the glistening lake, and the unforgettable sight of your new forever home, backed by the infinite night. You truly belong here. As the feast comes to an end, the plates of food and goblets begin to fade out of sight until you are left once again with the thick wooden tabletop. There is a full and satisfied feeling washing over you now and a new heaviness in your body. The headmaster announces that all new students are to follow the prefects of their house to find their common room. All of your belongings and your animals will be there waiting for you. As you exit the great hall, you are guided through long stone corridors with high curved ceilings and decorated with hand-carved pillars. Many oil paintings hang on the walls with moving pictures. Some feature famous witches and wizards, or diplomats in the wizarding world, and others are paintings of scenes Wizarding battles through history, or famous magical families from ages long since past. Their memories kept alive through these enchanted paintings. Before you know it, you are shuffling into a small wooden door and through a tiny corridor, your eyes half closed. As you round a corner to your left, the room opens up into an enormous Victorian living space. There is a huge log fireplace, surrounded with white stone, set in one corner, giving off a roaring glow and a perfect heat. The furniture is decorated in the colours of your wizarding house. 
an oil painting rests in the middle wall. A huge portrait depicting the founder of your house. The wooden floor is peppered with rugs, again in the colours of your house. Blankets and cushions of all sizes are thrown over the armchairs and the sofas. There is a collection of small wooden writing desks where one or two older wizards are already scribbling away on summer assignments. Circling one half of the room is an enormous bookshelf packed full of old leather-bound books and dusty hardbacks with loose pages. Some of the dates on the spines of the books reveal that they are over 900 years old. Above you is a beautiful chandelier with a collection of dimmed lights spinning gently on the ceiling. Your best friend leads you to a two-person sofa full of blankets and pillows and placed directly in front of the fire. A few other new students join you and sit opposite in different armchairs and sofas or perch on the rug. The group shares a smile and you let out a collective sigh after what has been a truly exhausting day. Your friend puts a hand into their pocket and pulls out their piece of napping nougat bought from the friendly old lady on the express. They break the nougat into small chunks and pass it round the group. As you chew this delicious, sleepy snack, a murmur of conversation begins around the group, and you take it in turns to tell your tale about how you arrived here. Some of your new friends are already from wizarding families, and so were expecting the letter. Others are like you, completely unaware of having this magic within them. You realize how comfortable you feel already and how quickly you are settling in to your new home. The fire roars gently and you find yourself slowly drifting out of the conversation and into a deep relaxation, your eyes becoming heavier and heavier. A magical aura washes over you and the atmosphere in your common room is a peaceful paradise of warmth and comfort. You are sinking deeper and deeper into the heavenly cushions, warmed by the wonderful crackling fire and feeling the magic of the napping nougat. It is an incredible thing to be completely free from thought and open to a world of possibility. You begin to feel that drifting sensation now on the borders of sleep. And just before it can take hold, you decide to bid good night to your new companions. And followed by your best friend, You wander down the stone corridor toward your bedroom. One of the prefects points the way to your room 
and you thank them with a sleepy smile. Your feet flop heavily on the concrete as your half-closed eyes guide you now, step by step, closer to bed. In front of you now appears a small wooden door. As you approach, the metal latch flicks and the door creaks open by itself. You are standing in a cosy room with a collection of comfortable beds and decorations all in the colours of your wizarding house, illuminated by the starlight beaming in through the window. There is a powerful enchantment in this room and the stars themselves are singing their very own lullaby tonight. Your luggage is stacked perfectly at the foot of your bed, and at the very top your animal is fast asleep in their cage. You poke a finger through their cage and give them a loving stroke on the top of their head. Eyes closed, they give your hand an affectionate sniff before dropping their head back down into sleep. Your best friend has already flopped down onto their bed and murmurs a muffled good night as they drift off in an instant. Before you know it, you are under the covers of your own bed, sinking deeper and deeper into this cloud-like mattress. The soft pillow supports your head perfectly, allowing you to completely let go. From the window next to your bed, you can see the vast grounds of the castle, illuminated by the spotlight of the moon and dotted with silver stars above it. You feel blessed to call this castle your home. The dreams you had of this place for all those years have finally been realized. And now you are on your own wizarding adventure. This is your story. You know now that no matter what, this castle and this world will always be here for you, whenever you need it. It has been a perfect day, and you feel a gentle excitement run through you at the thought of tomorrow. Tomorrow you begin your first lessons in magic. For now, however, it is time to rest, to relax your body and soothe your mind, to enter a world of dreams where you might glide above the highest mountain, or climb the tallest trees, or sail an enchanted sea. The stars will watch over you tonight, and they will guide your dreams. You are safe, you are warm, you are protected. Your eyelids are heavy now, 
and firmly closed. Your body and your mind is sinking deeper and deeper, and any remaining thoughts are falling away from you, leaving nothing but a beautiful black canvas decorated with stars and the twilight moon. You give yourself final permission to let go now, and allow yourself to drift into an enchanted and peaceful sleep. This magic is yours 